So this next video, right? Woman finds something shocking in the safe she inherited from her aunt, right? So don't this sound like a scary movie to y'all? The beginning of a scary movie? They normally find something old or has left something old in some kind of safe or they find something in a little space in the floor or it's something to do with something. I'm starting to think that like our loved ones who pass on and leave stuff behind are trying to torture us. Uh, don't it feel like that? At least the movies make it out to be that way. But anyway, we're going to get into this video. If you knew, you know what to do. Subscribe. And let's check this out. Seems weird. Moving to a new house can be upsetting, yet exciting at the same time. Upsetting? It's unfortunate that you must leave behind the place you once considered home, but it's also nice to look forward to a new beginning. These people began their new lives in their new houses expecting nothing out of the ordinary, but instead, they found that amazing things were hidden inside yeah, their new tub homes. In the floor. Let's look at some of the strangest things discovered inside people's residences. From a 19th century Victorian kitchen to the disappointment room, here are 15 crazy things Sounds found like in people's homes. Me. Disappointment room. Number 15. 19th century Victorian kitchen. Do you believe in the saying that one person's trash is another person's treasure? The things that you ignore uh. just might be valuable for others. Take the story of this house, for example. For decades, the oh. basement of a family home remained covered with a thick layer of dust and filled with piles of junk. Little did they know that a gem was hiding beneath their floorboards. When husband and wife Archie and Philippa finally decided to clean out their basement, they were pleasantly surprised by what they found. It turned out that their family home had a treasure trove of Victorian items, including a 19th century Victorian kitchen. The amazing- Now, nah, first glance, what do y'all look at and see? Look, hold on, I'm gonna go back to it. Trove of Victorian items, including- Look inside there. What, what could possibly in there? I don't know. Maybe somebody's bones, body, or ashes. I, I don't know. Being a 19th century Victorian kitchen, the amazing time capsule contained furniture, utensils, and cookbooks. Yo. In fact, if it weren't for the dust covering the furniture, it was as if the entire place had frozen in time. The kitchen had everything you needed to cook something including kettles, pots, pans, pastry cutters, jelly molds, and in case of an emergency, an antique fire extinguisher was also nearby. Because of Dang. the astounding discovery, the couple decided to dig more into the home's history. The kitchen dates back to the 1830s, and judging from the size and state of the kitchen, the home once had about 20 servants. The kitchen remained unused for almost an entire century, but was briefly recommissioned during the Second World War to serve as a shelter from air raids. The husband and wife plan to examine every nook and cranny of the estate. After all, other treasures might be hiding inside the massive historical residence. Before we go on... I don't blame them. They done found something of value. Something they can sell, make money off of. Oh yeah, yeah. We're going to tear this whole place down trying to find everything. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. $50,000, a bottle Bingo. of bourbon, and a secret safe. Renovating your own house sounds like a big DIY project, but I guess it's worth giving it a try, especially when you discover incredible things. For instance, when a couple living in Arizona, USA began their renovations, the two weren't expecting to find a secret safe or to be $50,000 richer. The couple named Eddie and Angie were tearing up the floorboards in their kitchen for a complete house makeover when they discovered a safe underneath. And it seemed like they were really lucky because just as they found the safe, they also found the safe combination in the medicine cabinet. How convenient. Right. Of course, the couple immediately decided to crack it open. The couple was expecting to find valuable things inside the safe, and they were right. Inside was neatly arranged cash that amounted to exactly $51,080. Also inside the safe was James E. Pepper bourbon and several photos. Seriously. How lucky do you need to be to find something as valuable as what these two discovered? Number 13. Now, I've heard people say, and that's why I'm asking y'all, y'all may know the answer to this. I've heard people say when they buried money, they went back to, to recover it, and it had molded, and it had stuck together, and it was no longer any good. If you bury it in a safe, is it protected? Just asking. I, I don't know. I, I, I never really got an answer to that before. Hidden Chapel. A family gathering wouldn't be a family gathering without a few drinks. 
Several glasses of alcohol and idle curiosity led the Farla family to explore the rest of their house on Good Friday in 2010. They knew that the house was a Victorian building, but despite living there for three years, they never had the chance to fully explore the house. Little did they know that beneath their Victorian-era building was an old chapel. When they first moved in, the Farla family noticed the metal grid a few steps from the door. However, they chose to shrug it off and cover the metal grid with a mat. But with their curiosity peaked, the Farla family decided to explore what lay beneath their floors. One of the men volunteered to squeeze himself through the small hole. He blinked in the darkness, but when his eyes adjusted, he found himself in the middle of an eerie cellar that looked like a chapel straight out of a horror movie. At the center of the chapel was a big decaying wooden cross. The Farla family was incredibly delighted by the discovery, but they were also taken aback by how eerie the basement was. They discovered newspapers dating back to the 1930s inside the chapel, but they believe it was built around the 1700s. The chapel wow. might have been used as a Catholic hideaway or for other nonconformist religious groups. However, there's also a chance that the underground chapel was repurposed as an underground bunker during the Second World War. Number 12. Mammoth Bones a man named John and his two teenage sons were picking blackberries around their property when they suddenly noticed what they thought was a ball. When they dug up the strange object, they realized they had discovered something else. In now that brings back memories. Is, is that just a southern thing, or do they do that a lot up north? I, and I've lived up north before, and I've never seen anybody even merely mention blackberries. But in Georgia, when I was a kid, walking around, picking them up, pulling them, Eating them just right then and there was a thing. When they dug up the strange object, they realized they had discovered something else. Instead of a ball, they had discovered the femur of an animal that lived thousands of years ago. Wow. After seeing the entire skeleton, the family immediately contacted experts to have a look at it. Employees at the local museum claimed that the femur had been buried for at least 10,000 years. Woolly mammoths were massive creatures that roamed the cold tundra of Europe, Asia, and North America from 300,000 years ago up until about 10,000 years ago. Many people fail to realize that woolly mammoths coexisted with humans. In fact, the last known group of woolly mammoths lived until about 1650 BC. That's more than 100,000 years after the pyramids of Giza were built. It must have been really cool to discover such an important fossil. Number 11. I wonder how much he got for Rare it. painting. For decades, a painting depicting a scene from the Passion and Crucifixion of Christ hung in the kitchen of a woman living in Campaign, France. The painting already showed signs of years of exposure to smoke and grime. But it was alright since it was only a knockoff. Except, it wasn't. It turned out <laughs> that the painting she used as a strange kitchen centerpiece was a rare Renaissance treasure that was painted more than seven centuries ago. The painting was thought to be the work of artist Jenny de Peppo, also known as Cimabue. He was a 13th century painter famous for mentoring Giotto. The painting would have remained hidden if the woman didn't decide to sell her house and some of her belongings at a small auction house. Needless to say, the expert who appraised her property was floored upon discovering the rare painting. The last price of the piece wasn't revealed, but experts believe that it would fetch millions at auction. Number 10. Rare Russian Figurine while cleaning the attic of a deceased retiree's home in New York, workers discovered a rare Fabergé figurine in pristine condition. The Russian figurine dates back to 1912. It depicted a personal bodyguard to royalty and was mm. given by Tsar Nikolai II to his wife, years before Bolshevik revolutionaries killed them. Just like the Fabergé eggs, only 50 figurines were made, making them incredibly rare. You see, just like the bejeweled Fabergé eggs, this Russian figurine is adorned with several diamonds. It might look ordinary at first glance, but its eyes are made of tiny sapphires, and the embellishments in its uniform are made with real gold. After the figurine's discovery, it was sold for a staggering $5.2 million at auction. Sheesh. Number 9. I was sitting here calculating in my mind. I was like, I wonder how much. I was a little bit on the high side, though. I was thinking maybe $10 million. But still, $5 million ain't nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> Prohibition Era Whiskey National prohibition of alcohol whiskey. was implemented and announced in 1920 and continued until 1933. It was meant as a noble experiment that was meant to reduce crime, corruption, and solve social problems. 
Of course, most people in the United States didn't like banning the manufacture, transportation, and sale of intoxicating beverages. But the government was adamant about its implementation. But it's safe to say that the noble experiment was a failure. Instead of completely halting transactions involving alcoholic beverages, they were instead done more discreetly. It also increased the number of people who smuggled whiskey and homemade alcoholic beverages. In 2020, a couple living in their century-old home in New York stumbled upon an interesting discovery that showed how the people lived during the Prohibition era. While renovating their home, they discovered more than 66 bottles of smuggled Prohibition era whiskey. Upon digging further into the home's history, the owners found out that it was built in 1915 by a German man known as Count Adolf Humpfner, and it just so happened that he was a famous bootlegger. Count Adolf had a shady, mysterious past. He allegedly moved to the area from Germany and dabbled with illegal or questionable transactions since his arrival. Unfortunately for him, he didn't live long enough to sell all of the alcoholic stash he kept inside his house. I keep thinking about life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. <laughs> 36 cases of evidence. The homeowners decided to keep some alcoholic beverages they found for themselves, and the others would be sold at auction. Number 8. Love Letters from World War I The First World War was a global oh. conflict that lasted from 1914 to 1918. Millions of people died and many families were destroyed. It was a tumultuous time for the entire world, and living back then was hell compared to the peaceful times we enjoy today. And yet, people at the time learned how to build connections despite the war raging on around them. In this heartwarming discovery, Bill Mathis and his wife stumbled upon several love letters carefully tucked within the home's insulation wall in downtown Jasper, Indiana. Curious, they retrieved the letters from where they were stored in the wall and read them one by one. The couple found out that the letters were written by a World War II soldier named Clements Berger. All the letters were addressed to his sweetheart, Mary Borough. Clements was stationed in West Point, Kentucky and was preparing to be deployed into the Great War. The man wrote about his fears and how he was afraid that he wouldn't be seeing the town of Jasper and the love of his life Mary again as he fulfilled his duty as a soldier. The man also shared about his life from being a soldier in training to being a soldier deployed during the Great War. After reading the heartfelt letters, the couple found it necessary to locate the rightful owners of the letters and return them. As a stepping stone, the couple asked the local newspaper to feature the letters they found, and as luck would have it, the article did the trick. The nieces of Clements and Mary learned about the letters and contacted the couple. Now you're probably curious, did the two end up together? Well, thankfully, Clements and Mary got their happy ending at the end of the First World War. Word. That same year, the couple got married and built a family. However, a question remained. How did the letters end up in the walls of Bill's house in the first place? The answer to this remains unknown to this day. Probably Number remodel. Seven, Roman bath. When Mark and Jenny... Now, this is by far one of the craziest things I've ever seen somebody say they stumbled upon. That is a, a Roman bath. Huntsman moved into their huh? house. The owner told them that the house had a unique feature. It wasn't until three years ago after moving that they finally decided to check out what the previous owner told them about. It turned out that beneath their floorboards was a fully intact Roman bath. According to the previous owners, they used the bath for several years. But when they got- I was about to ask y'all, would y'all, would you do it? have to do it man I, I think i'd have to do it it bothered me too much not to older they decided to board it up and convert it into an office after several hours of cleaning and having the tub sanitized the roman bath was back to its full glory ready to give the new homeowners a relaxing soak number six rare That's comic crazy. collection unless you're an avid comic fan you might not understand why several pieces of paper can be sold for millions of dollars but to die-hard Batman and Superman fans, this discovery is something right out of their fantasies. In 2012, it was announced that a man had discovered rare Golden Age comics in their family home. The man, named Michael Rohrer, stumbled upon the collection in the closet of his recently deceased great-aunt in Martinsville, Virginia. According to Michael, the comics belonged to his great-uncle Billy Wright, who bought the comics when he was about 9 to 14 years old. He kept the collection in good condition until he died as a bachelor in 1994. Among the rare collection was a copy of Action Comics No. 1 in pristine condition. 
That single wow. copy sold for a staggering $298,750. The collection also included the first appearance of Batman in Detective Comics number 27, which sold for a whopping $522,000. Overall, the 200 What? Are you kidding me? And I took my nephew to the store several months back and he was just grabbing comics and I was explaining to him and he he has somewhat knowledge but I was explaining to him how a lot of people you know that I've seen over the years collect them you know what I mean but these are astronomical numbers and the man who was collecting them don't even get to enjoy it don't even get to enjoy the fruits of his I, I guess you, you can't call it labor but you know what I mean everything he did everything he collected like, he don't even get to enjoy it. Somebody else comes along, finds it, and ultimately seeks out the value of it and then gets rich. You know what I mean? Or makes a lot of money off of it. If that entire room is worth a mere, like, half of what he's been getting so far, that was a gold mine. 122 comics discovered in the stash raked in an eye-watering amount of $3,400,000. Even avid wow. collectors were astounded when hearing about the collection. After all, it was the type of find that was too good to be true. Number 5. Wow. Painting dumped in the attic turned out to be a Van Gogh piece. In this day and age, there is no one who doesn't know who Vincent Van Gogh is. The Dutch post-impressionist painter posthumously became one of the most famous figures in Western art history. Several of his pieces are the most popular paintings, recognized by millions worldwide. However, some of his artworks were significantly less known than his most renowned paintings, like The Starry Night and his own self-portrait. Who knows? You might just be like this family who unknowingly dumped a Van Gogh painting in their attic for years. The previous unknown oil painting was identified by experts 85 years after it was stored inside the Norwegian attic. Initially, the owners recognized that the painting looked like something Van Gogh would have made in his lifetime, but they thought it was too good to be true that they had a full-sized artwork by the Dutch painter. Certainly it was fake, right? That's what they thought as they chucked the painting into the dark, dusty attic. Decades later, they were pleasantly surprised when the painting was identified as an authentic piece. It's now known as Sunset at Montmajour. According to letters from the Dutch master to his brother Theo, the artist created the painting in 1888 when Van Gogh was living in Arles, southern France. But as it turned out, the artist rejected the painting because it was below his standards. For this reason, he thought it wouldn't be necessary to put his signature on it. The lack of his signature also became the reason why experts at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam concluded that the painting was a fake. But thanks to modern technology that perfectly analyzed the entire piece, researchers managed to obtain physical evidence that the painting was indeed one of Van Gogh's pieces. Mm. Now you're probably wondering about the total price of the painting. Well, we yes. don't have that data yet. But since the artist's last painting sold for a staggering $39.9 million in 1987, this piece 39. might be sold around the same price. Number four. And that was in 87. Imagine finding one now what it'll go for. Mysterious. They say art, man. I got to get into the art world, bro. <laughs> Seriously. I got to get into the art world. Safe. It's always great to receive something from our older relatives. Antique furniture, jewelry passed down in your family for generations, some cash, or maybe even a whole safe. A woman in 2019 didn't know what to expect when she inherited a safe that originally belonged to her great aunt. The entire metal safe was covered with rust after decades of being stored away. However, it remained tightly sealed throughout the years, and no one in her family knew what was hidden inside. She decided that it was finally time to open the mysterious safe, and needless to say, she was incredibly surprised by what she found. When she turned the key, her heart sank as the safe looked empty, but as she inspected the safe, she discovered it had a false bottom. After examining the safe, she figured out how to open the hidden storage inside the safe. Spoiler alert, she didn't find any actual treasure, but what was inside the safe was worth its weight in gold. The compartment held a treasure trove of historical objects, including books, letters, and pictures. Photos of her aunt and other members of her family were also safely stored inside the safe. Along with the photos and letters were three books. One was an old copy of The Lady and the Tramp, a first edition copy of Rob Roy by W. Scott, 
and a copy of Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. I don't know why her aunt chose to keep a copy of the book, but perhaps she knew that the book's value would increase in the future. Unfortunately, the total value of the books would only be about $700 combined. But despite mm. that, the historical importance and significance of the books to their family were certainly priceless. It turned out that the woman's great aunt settled in Hamburg after leaving Russia during the 1940s. Her great aunt lived in tumultuous times, and perhaps the safe served as reassurance that her family would remember her in the future. Number 3. 33 Foot Deep Hole This discovery is like something straight out of a horror movie. A couple moves into a house and feels something strange beneath their floorboards. When they finally decide to investigate it, they discover something incredibly unnerving, except no ghosts or demons are involved in this story. In 2012, a couple discovered a 33-foot deep hole right under their sofa. The See, this is the part of home buying, the home buying experience that they leave out. You know what I mean? They don't tell you about. The couple already knew about the hole when they first moved into the Victorian home in Plymouth in the late 1980s. However, they decided to ignore the hole until 24 years later when they finally couldn't contain their curiosity. The hole turned out to be a 16th century well more than 30 feet deep. That's it was used crazy. more than a century ago and could date as far back as the 16th century, just after the end of the medieval period. What's astounding is that just five feet into the medieval well, they made another discovery, an old sword. The sword wasn't anything notable. It was pretty simple and made using ordinary metal that was Still. sloppily melded into a sword. It made experts believe that the artifact inside the well belonged to a peasant or a person with a lower status. The sword was probably used until it fell down the well accidentally. Still the a great find. didn't really have any use for the well, and they needed to cover it up immediately to avoid any accidents. Still, it became a great conversation starter and an excellent addition to their home's history. Now, one thing I would be nervous about is making sure, you know, having that thing open, no gases or anything is coming up from them. So I hope they stuck like a four gas monitor in there to make sure they wasn't just allowing this stuff to seep into their home, be sleeping in, never wake up. You know what I mean? Number two. Crazy. 300 year old Maya murals. In 2003, a family living in the mountainous region of Guatemala was renovating their house when they stumbled upon an astonishing discovery. After taking down the walls of the home's kitchen, they discovered several figures drawn on the walls. The homeowners immediately realized that it might be a significant illustration. Their intuition was correct. What they discovered in their kitchen was a 300-year-old mural. The house was allegedly built in the colonial era from 1520 to 1820, and so it wasn't odd to discover historical illustrations or artifacts in the area. According to experts, the murals were religious artworks used by the Spanish conquistadors to assert their dominance over the Maya. However, the Maya also left behind their own artworks, but instead of putting them in public areas or places of worship, they were drawn inside houses where only the residents could see them. That's why the Mayan mural was incredibly rare. The murals depicted several themes. One mural depicted tall, bearded men playing drums as they came face to face with a group dressed in traditional feathered costumes. This most likely illustrated the dance of the conquest, where Spaniards tried to convert the Maya to Christianity. Other parts of the mural depicted people frozen in motion, as if they were performing a ritual or a dance. Although it isn't confirmed, the murals might be the key to unraveling the mysteries of the lost indigenous dances in the 19th century. Number 1. The Disappointments Room Buying a home can be pretty stressful. That just sounds like... Ah, kind of torturous a little bit. There's the insane amount of expenses, the pressure of getting along with your new neighbors, and moving everything you own. Add to that the possibility of your new house being haunted. When new homeowners Lori and Jeff Dumas signed the deal for their dream home in Rhode Island, neither of them expected the residents to be muddled with a dark history. Shortly after moving into the house, they began noticing strange occurrences. Nothing alarming, but they always felt as if something was wrong. When they finally decided to explore the attic and examine the upper floor of the house, they discovered the source of the unsettling feeling. In the home's attic was a strange room. It was dead bolted off, and the interior was made entirely of metal. It didn't look like the usually hidden room for a house. It looked like a torture chamber more than anything. See? After the discovery, Lori was determined to learn more about the history of their house. 
When she visited the local library, room. she learned much about the disheartening and chilling history of the house. It turned out that the room they discovered in the attic of their new home was called a disappointment room. It was a place where elite members of society would hide away their children who were born with disabilities. As a worker in the research department of the what? West Warwick Public Library, Lori was able to retrieve more information about the house. The former owner of the residence was a local judge named Job Smith Carpenter. The Carpenter family lived in the house from 1866 to 1906. Smith and his wife, Frances Ellen Carpenter, had a daughter named Ruth, who they kept hidden because of her disability. The judge was a prominent figure in the area at the time, and a local establishment was named after him. For this reason, the elite and those with higher status found it necessary to hide relatives or immediate family members with disabilities. It's chilling to discover that people born with disabilities were treated horribly in the past, but this is just one of the many injustices done to them in the past. In the early 20th century, eugenics was proposed. Simply put, it was the selection of desirable heritable characteristics to improve future generations. Its purpose might sound good and noble, but the movement led to cruelty and injustice, especially to people with disabilities. After discovering the history behind the sinister room, Lori decided to raise funds for children born with disabilities and raise awareness about their disabilities. So which one of these discoveries impressed you the most? And do you Fam, a disappointment room where they would put kids who had disabilities that they were pretty much wanted to keep hidden and were ashamed of. Now, before some of y'all judge and, and point the finger, remember what you do sometimes when you make fun of people and go on social media and do different things. What's the difference between you and them? Neither one of them are right. This is insane to even have. I told y'all I had an eerie feeling about that. A disappointment room? That don't even sound right. Oh, man. That's crazy, man. And and then you came from them, so it's not... It, it wasn't the kid with the disabilities' fault. It came from them. Oh, my. That was a bomb to be dropped at the end of the video. That's insane. That's insane. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you think. And stick around and stay tuned, man. Until next time, I'm gone. Peace.